We're joined by Brian Hayes to break down this media conference that everyone was really anticipating. Mark Shapiro made mention in his availability about playing meaningful baseball in September as a definition of what a successful season is. Brian, what did you think about when you heard those words come out of Shapiro's mouth? I think that's ultimately moving the goalpost, Jay, isn't it? Like, it's not about the World Series anymore. It's about meaningful games in September. You know, that, that's what I would expect out of the Pittsburgh Pirates, out of the Colorado Rockies, the Oakland Athletics. I, I would not expect that out of someone who's been here for a decade that, again, came out of spring training talking about pursuing a World Series. Uh, I think it's ultimately moving the goalpost. He referenced making the playoffs three of the last five years. They didn't win one game in any of those playoff performances and also it's a bit deceptive because one of those was during the COVID season when they were 30, 30 and 30 and 60 games you know so it's ultimately moving the goalpost and I, I don't think it's anything that any Blue Jay fan really wants to hear because it's trying to compensate for something that didn't work and it also doesn't address what happened this year right they peaked a couple of years ago last year they barely had meaningful games in September there were times in la in September last year where it didn't feel like they were going to make the playoffs and if they did get in they would fizzle out and that's exactly what happened in that two game series in Minnesota this year they went 74 games they weren't playing meaningful games in July you know so the goal the goal post ultimately moved a lot and I think it, he may have answered what a lot of Blue Jay fans were fearful of that that's really what ownership is looking for yeah. in order in order for them to be happy is just give me some meaningful games let me sell that let me sell some tickets into September let's try to keep some buzz going if you win some playoff games so be it if you get to the LDS great the CS great World Series wow that would be awesome but if that's what we're talking about as the goal here meaningful games in September I think it was a complete miss from Mark Shapiro and honestly I, I thought it was a tone deaf tone from him in particular because the PR matters I know Mark understands this Ross understands this every GM every executive gets it actions speak louder than mm -hmm. words and really nothing that could be said today would rectify what happened this year or make people truly you know uh, totally pumped up for next season but you do need to feed the beast a little bit with some more emotion and really seeking out that winning pedigree. Go at it the way Masai Ujiri generally does. Attack, winning, attack, talking about the World Series. And he didn't say that today. He talked about meaningful games in September. You know, and, you know, just to follow up, the entire tone of the press conference seemed to be, I know that you as a fan base are upset at us, and we know that, and we're acknowledging that publicly, and we, we're saying we're going to be better. But as you said, those are just words. Like, how disappointed were you to hear Ross Atkins simply say, I know I have to be better. I, Mark Shapiro saying, I know I have to be better. What does that even mean at the end of the day, Brian? Well, I, honestly, it wasn't that disappointing because we've been down this road so many times, Jay. Like, it, it was really a carbon copy from what we hear, heard last year. You know, th this is what they offer up basically on an annual, um, you know, basis now is this idea that they're going to have this internal improvement, right? Internal process and adjustments and progress. It, it's just empty calories. It really doesn't mean anything. And they didn't give any explanation as to how that was going to happen. How are you going to be better going into year 10 as the GM if you're Ross Atkins? Mark Shapiro has been here for longer than that. What are they going to do differently? They've been in baseball for years. Mark Shapiro has been in baseball for 30 years. What is he possibly going to do differently this time that he didn't do last year or the year before that or the year before that, the year before that? You can go all the way down the line. Um, it, I don't think it was really frustrating anymore. It was actually leading to some apathy. And I, I'm sure mm. I speak for a lot of Blue Jay fans when I say that, that they probably predicted this tone, this approach, this verbiage. And based on what we've seen in the past, I, I don't think Blue Jay fans are jumping out of their seat with excitement in terms of what these two individuals are going to do this offseason that would possibly make it significantly better next year and maybe even worse you know not just apathy but concern about getting Vladdy Guerrero Jr. signed Shapiro said uh, that Guerrero Jr. is not a generational player but he has an opportunity to be one he might be right about that I'm just not sure why you would say why you would say that in a press conference before you've signed the player I think how much confidence do you have that, that Shapiro and Atkins can actually get Guerrero Jr. signed long term 
Well, it, it is a reasonable question at this point. And, and I, I do think it's a tough question for Mark to answer publicly because they are in the midst of negotiation, you would assume. Whether the, the negotiations are already happening or are forthcoming and will happen at some point, he's got to be careful with what he says. Because if he comes out and does label Vladdy Guerrero Jr. a generational talent and then they don't sign him, how could you possibly explain that? How can you label him publicly a generational talent and then say, well, we're not going to pay you $325 million or $350 million, whatever it is. So he was backed into a corner to an extent. I think publicly he's going to be careful with his words. And I, I don't believe that Vladdy is a generational talent, and I'm not sure that Mark Shapiro does. Vladdy was great this year, undoubtedly. 30 home runs, 44 doubles, 199 hits. He had a great year. And a few years ago, he also had a great year in 2021. And he's a guy that plays every day. I think he's only missed like 12 games the last five years. So he's someone that's very predictable and someone that's very reliable. But generational talent, I think, is a stretch. I mean, that, that's for Judge. That's for Otani. That's for A-Rod when he came into the league. Ken Griffey Jr. That's not where Vladdy is. So uh, I, I agree with Shapiro's assessment. I think it's a tough question to answer publicly. But I, I, I know they're paying lip service to the idea of being committed to Vladdy and being committed to Bo. And you played the clip of Ross Atkins saying they're committed to the core. And I think he was speaking of those two in particular. But again, actions will speak louder than words. You know, what they say today ultimately is meaningless unless they can lock them down. And maybe they don't really want to do that with both of them. I guess we'll find out down the road. And in the end, again, the owner is going to factor into all this. You know, Ed Rogers with what happened with the Leafs and the Raptors and TFC and the Argos and Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, that's the most powerful man in town when it comes to pro sports. And he had an opportunity to make a real statement today. And every fan base in the city is waiting for it. Yep. And he did. 74 wins, nothing's going to change. So I think every fan base is looking at him in particular in terms of what happens here, what happens with the other teams, and ultimately, to your question, what happens with Vladdy because he will be the one signing him to that contract. And believe me, it'll be well over $300 million if they're going to keep him long term. Ryan Hayes, thanks for this.